This week on Peter's Organising Pals, I'm sending a call out to all you crafters out there. Now, every time I walk into a craft room, I get a little overwhelmed myself because let's be honest, those spaces can get a little out of control. This week, my friend Gail Goddard from the Clutter Ferry, who is a crafter herself, a beader, shows us how to organize a crafting space to feed your creativity. There are tons of tips here, tons of great ideas. Check it out. Hi, I'm Gail Goddard, owner of the Clutter Ferry in Houston, Texas. Thanks so much, Peter, for letting me participate in Peter's Organizing Pals. We're going to talk today about organizing your art studio, your craft studio. I want to help you support your creativity by keeping your space organized. I've been a bead artist for 30 years as well as a professional organizer now, and I can talk to you about organizing your studio from long experience of trying to make my bead space work well for being creative and having a good time doing bead work. Artists are really visual people, and so they need all of their supplies to be out and available for working with and designing with. Most of us tend to try the traditional storage solutions first, which are closed containers, put up inside drawers, put up in cabinets. They're solid so you can't see through them, and they don't really work for organizing and designing actively. So that's the first problem that artists have. The second one is that we love our supplies. As you can see in the background, I have a lot of beads after a long time of being a beader, bead artist, and I spend all of my time talking about beads, thinking about beads, buying beads, and I'm sure you do the same with your own craft. So we tend to buy all of the supplies that we're super excited about, which means you get a big, big quantity of them. And so any small storage solution doesn't work. You really need a solution that can house your ever-expanding and vast collection and allow you to design with it. My roommate and I are both bead artists, so all of the examples that I'm going to use in this conversation are going to be about beading, but it applies to any discipline. And any creative endeavor can be broken out into four main categories. The first one is the main supplies. For me, it's going to be all of these seed beads out here because that's my main supply when I'm doing any kind of bead work. I'm going to start with these seed beads, and so here they are all racked up for me to look at. If you're a knitter, your main supply is going to be yarn. If you're a painter, your main supply is going to be paint. If you're a scrapbooker, your main supply is going to be paper. So all of those are the first materials that you go to when you start to design your work. So those are the materials that need to be out so that you can see them, you can access them, you can use them in the design process. So anything that you do to support them, to make them visible, they need to be out and permanently displayed so you can access them and use them when you're ready to do your work. The next category for art supplies is the embellishment supplies. So for a bead artist, those are things like buttons, which I have in a box here, and some crystals that are added in later in the work, and I also have other crystal things over here. The basic idea is that every type of art has some sort of embellishment supply that you add in later on to the process. So those things need to be visible, just like your main supplies, but they also need to be portable so that they can stay off of your work table most of the time. These are racked in another area. These are here because I have enough space, but if you don't have space, then you need to be able to store them away from your table, and then you can bring them over when you're going to work with them. The third category is tools. So this is a tool caddy for all of our bead tools, and it swivels. This is very exciting. But you don't want to have all of the tools that you own, because I know you own a lot of them. You only want the tools on here that you use the most often. So those are the ones that you want to have on the table, on your working space, so that you can grab them. And then the ones that you don't use very often, you can store away on another place. The fourth category is reference materials. Every artist of any type has a million pieces of paper related to their art in their life. So you're going to have books, you're going to have magazines, you're going to have class notes, you're going to have cutouts from magazines, little cutout pieces of paper, you're going to have scribbled notes from taking notes in the class. All of those tend to end up in the studio and sort of all over everywhere. So this is an area where you want to corral all those materials in one place store them so that you can find them because no one actually pulls out all their books at once for a project. You only need one or two at a time on the table where you're working and then the rest can be here in your reference library. And the good thing about that is that this doesn't have to be right where you are. It can be in a bookshelf anywhere in the house. It can be nearby or away in another room if it has to be just as long as all of those materials are contained in the same place. So we do some of that in um, magazine holders to hold the magazines. You can use binders to hold the clips 
and the loose material, the class materials. The goal is that all of the books and support materials end up in the same place. If you sort all of your supplies into those four categories, you will be in great shape to be creative at your workspace. So now I want to give you some tips to help you along the way in the process. And the first one is clear containers. So we all go to the art supply store and we pick up containers like this and we think that they're clear, but they're not really clear. They're really only translucent. So what happens with them is you think that you're going to be able to see, and here's one that's got stuff in it. You can't see anything, right? So these are the wrong containers to get, even though they're the easiest and cheapest, of course, to get. Aim for truly clear containers and you'll be in good shape. The next tip is project boxes. Artists ask me all the time, what do I do with my projects that are in the middle of being worked on and they're not complete? My answer for that is project boxes. Use them only for projects so that they're visually distinguished from anything else that's going on, any of the other containers that you use for your art. And this is an example of a project box for a beater. This is actually a photo keeper, but I'm using it for projects. So inside my project box here, I have my materials and my beads and my bracelet that's not finished yet. And when I'm not working on it, I can close it and put it away. This is a container that holds several of them so that all of my works in progress are contained in one place in one particular kind of container. If you're working with a larger project, you can certainly have larger project boxes. Knitters and painters are going to have bigger projects that need to contain. The idea is just to have a piece that's big enough to hold your works in progress. The last tip today is the label maker. Every artist should have a label maker and I'll tell you why. This is my roommate's main bead supply. She prefers it organized on these trays in bookshelves instead of on the table like mine. And how she makes that work for her is that she came back and added all these labels onto these lovely trays. So this is all broken out by color and size. And then she came back and labeled them so that she can find exactly what she wants when she's ready to grab it. And that's why those labels are so important because it lets you go straight to what you need when you need it. I hope that you use these suggestions so that when creativity calls, you'll be ready to go with a clean and clear workspace. We'd love to hear from you, so please leave comments on the YouTube channel, or you can visit us at clutterforhouston.com or on Facebook. Bye. Say bye, Butch. Bye.